Next we'll hear about microservices testing uh, using Argo. Please welcome to the stage Matthew Prozowski. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. So thanks uh, Antti for introduction. Let me just uh, start. Okay. Uh, okay, so hello everyone. I hope that you still have some power left uh, after these two exciting days. Uh, so today I will present you microservice testing using Argo. So there was already a pool about Kubernetes. So I will not ask this question, but maybe uh, just somebody heard about Argo? Okay, no hands. Uh, okay, and also I will uh, first introduce myself. So my name is Maciej Brzozowski. Uh, Anti almost uh, pronounced uh, it right. <laughs> uh, and I work in Nordia Bank, uh, probably you know it. Uh, in, it's a bank in Scandinavia, in Scandinavian uh, region. Uh, but I work in, uh, I'm from Poland, and I work in uh, Gdynia, Poland, uh, as a senior IT developer. Uh, and on a daily basis, I'm focused uh, on test automation. So let's have a look on the agenda. So first, we are going to have a short comment about uh, microservices and uh, microservices uh, and containers. Then I will show you example application that we are going to to test. Uh, then we will see what tools we will use for testing. Then there will be a, a demo. It will be a recording. So I, I am sure that everything will be all right. Uh, and it will be a little bit fast forward. Uh, then we will have a look on how it is actually done. And I hope that you still have uh, power to focus. Uh, there will be a lot of YAML files uh, and stuff like that. Uh, and that, and then we will have a look uh, on another project from Argo family, Argo events. And yeah, we will not focus on front-end today. So if you are interested in, interested, uh, in testing fr uh, front-end with uh, Kubernetes, then you should have a look, for example, for uh, Zelenium uh, from Zalando. Uh, last year there was a talk about that, so you can uh, find it out uh, on YouTube. So now, just boring backend stuff. Okay, uh, so first it will be uh, good to uh, to mention what is actually in microservices. So normally the application is built as a monolith, uh, so this uh, Rubik cube. Uh, so application is built as a one uh, unit. The parts are uh, closely connected. Uh, and if we have more and more code, uh, especially legacy code, then it's hard to, to change. Uh, something to, to, to rebuild something. Uh, so there is a different approach called microservices. Uh, and in this approach, application is divided to, to smaller parts. Uh, and these parts uh, can be fast, quite fast uh, changed. Um, and also it is easier to, to, to scale. Uh, of course, in theory, <laughs> uh, both uh, and these microservices uh, uh, 
has a drawback that complexity increases. But uh, of course, both uh, there is more and more uh, pros and cons of both approaches. But today we are not going to to focus on that. It's another topic of this presentation. Uh, yeah, and most of the time the services as, is delivered as Docker containers. Yeah, so most of you are uh, familiar with that. So. It's good that we have all the uh, libraries, dependencies the, the, which are needed during the runtime. So we are sure that uh, we will have the same environment during the runtime. And uh, also it's easy to, to share these containers. And if we have more and more these services, we would like to have some tool to run them all. Uh, and we meet with a Docker Compose. And at some point it, it is working fine, but then we would like to have more sophisticated features like load balancing. Maybe uh, we like that our containers will be self-healing. Uh, uh, we would like to do uh, updates uh, also more in more intelligent way. So we like to do rolling updates or canary updates. So basically we need some kind of orchestration system. So nowadays the most popular is Kubernetes. So we start to use it. Uh, but how are we going to, to test the service, the services, the application? Uh, the complexity has uh, increased, so we need some kind of a tool that will help us to, to simulate uh, testing scenarios. So uh, we need some kind of workflow engine. Uh, and the answer for it is Argo. This is the, the logo. Uh, and what is nice that uh, it is natively built in, uh, in Kubernetes uh, environment. Uh, so if you are familiar with Kubernetes, it's quite straightforward to, to just sit and write your own workflow. So you don't need to have learn a new technology. Uh, it uses the same concepts uh, like YAML files, config maps, and stuff like that. Uh, and what is nice, it is open source, so you don't have to build your own uh, solution. you just ready to go. Okay, so let's have a look on example application. Uh, so let's imagine that uh, some other application, some other team is uh, sending us data quality metrics uh, about the data on big data cluster, uh, it will be Hadoop cluster, uh, and we can define the rules uh, of this metrics, but basically it's like counts of the rows, how many nulls we have, and stuff like that. And they are sending it uh, to, to Kafka. Kafka will be used as a message uh, broker. Uh, and we consume this message. Uh, this message is stored in the database in Postgres. Then we forward, forward it to another service, and this service has more uh, sophisticated logic. Uh, it is aggregating these uh, messages, and it's building a view. And this view is sent to another service, and this service is storing it, just storing it in a, a Elasticsearch. And Elasticsearch will be used as a NoSQL database. And on this point, we will just finish, uh, and we will try to test it. So to, to test it, we will use, of course, Robot Framework as our test uh, runner, and we will use the same platform as our production uh, runs, 
So we will use Kubernetes, or we can use also OpenShift. OpenShift is uh, another distribution of Kubernetes made by Red Hat. And to simulate, to, uh, to provision our test, we will use Argo. OK, so here is the Argo UI. And now I will start the, the record. So I uh, so the um, workflow has started. The first box is just the name of the workflow. Then the second box is uh, is a container that is cloning the test repository, and then we will start uh, all the dependencies that services needs. So we are setting up database. We are setting up Elasticsearch. We are setting uh, up uh, Kafka. Kafka needs a zookeeper. When the database is ready, we uh, run three times run migration uh, service, which is preparing the, uh, the schema in the database. And then we run the first test. This test is checking if the schema is correct. Uh, and then we are doing some kind of setup before we start the uh, services. So basically, we are sending some data to Kafka Topics. We start the uh, services. Uh, one of them is run twice because of uh, different configuration. And we start the test. Uh, as, you, as you can, uh, as you have uh, seen, uh, we can also check logs during the execution. This is the console output of the container. Uh, yeah. So now let's have a look how it is actually done. So uh, each step needs uh, three things. So it, it, it needs some kind of storage uh, to, to, to store data. In the Kubernetes word, it's called volume. And we, need, we would like to store some configuration. So we will store configuration in a config map. And a confidential uh, configuration we will store in a secret. Yeah, so uh, now we'll have a look on a YAML definition. So all the uh, Kubernetes resources starts with four uh, attributes. And basically, we need to fill them. Uh, and so now we will just prepare a, a volume for our test repository. So we create a persistent volume claim. And we say how many storage we, we need. When the file is defined, then we can run a CLI tool called Cube Control. We can create it. We can do the same on. OpenShift with a OC CLI. And uh, on the bottom, you have a screenshot from OpenShift. So as you can see, the, repo, uh, the volume was uh, provisioned for us. OK. And uh, then we need some kind of uh, flow for, for a Git step. So um, we will create a simple script that we will do a git clone for us. Uh, and let's say that uh, this script will be changed uh, quite often. So we will store it in a configuration map uh, because we don't want to rebuild uh, the image every time we change uh, just this script. This script just will, on a fresh volume, will do the git clone. And on other executions, it will just do, uh, will we'll get updates and check out on the, the branch that we currently want to, to use. Uh, then stuff like, uh, for example, in, uh, in, in, in Git example, we need something to, to connect, somehow to connect to the repository. So we need a private uh, SSH key. Uh, and for example, a known host to authenticate the server. So we will store it in a it's a confidential data, so we will store it in a secret uh, resource. Uh, as you can see, probably, probably not. Uh, here we have uh, it is not uh, encrypted; it is just encoded with base64. So, if you would like to store this file in a repository, then you need to use some third-party tools like uh, Gitcrypt or 
SOPS uh, tool. Uh, but now we just create it and we are happy. Uh, then we need to define an image for, for our step. For Git, it's quite straightforward, just, uh, just an, uh, an image with, with Git. So we will switch to the test runner. So here is a Docker file. It's not perfect, it's just to, to, to everything will be uh, in a, so we can see everything in one place. So it is based on Ubuntu. We install the stuff that we, that we need. So for example, a git crypt, curl, depends on our test. Uh, then we install Python. We install the dependencies, so robot framework uh, and libraries. And uh, we need some kind of entry point. So uh, entry point will be, uh, we, we will see on the next slide. Uh, and uh, when basically when the entry point is, uh, is defined, we build the image. Yeah, so entry point will be our execution flow uh, during, the, uh, during the execution of the test, basically. So we can manipulate uh, the, the flow using environment variables. Of course, you can write uh, this entry point uh, in Python or whatever you like. This is just an example. Uh, and then uh, we do everything that is needed to, to start the, the test. And of course, not but loop. The, the most important part in that case will be to, to run robot framework uh, test. Uh, and we need to remember to, to return uh, RC. So uh, Argo can decide if the step fails or, or passes. Uh, when the image is ready, we need to somehow uh, make it available in Kubernetes and for Argo. So we need to tag it to the reg cluster registry name. We need to log into registry. We need to push it. And then we need to, of course, uh, define our tests. So most of you are familiar with robot framework. So simple stuff, doing some setup define test cases, and it's good to uh, use tags so we can manipulate the execution. Uh, and then we need to define the workflow. So workflow is al also defined as a YAML. So we start with uh, four basic attributes. We provide a kind, we provide API. It will be understood when the Argo will be uh, installed on the cluster. We provide the name of our workflow. We can provide a workflow uh, input uh, parameters. So for example, we can manipulate the repository and the revision uh, that will be uh, done by a git uh, step. And then we need to define uh, sorry, the entry point of our workflow, and we define uh, the volumes that will be used by our workflow. Uh, and then we, we need to define the, the graph. So now we have two approaches, so we can do the simpler way. It's called just steps. So it's a simpler way where we can just define serial and parallel steps. But this time we will create a DAG. So DAG is a directed uh, acyclic graph. And uh, this graph will be built by Argo controller for us. We just need to provide the name for the step, the sub-template. So the sub-template is a definition of, of the step, so what the image is used and so on. We can also provide arguments uh, in the step level. So here I'm passing the repository information and stuff like that. Uh, and for other steps, we provide uh, dependencies. It can be a list of dependencies. And we do as much steps as we want. We need to define the sub-templates. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, first, uh, let's have a look that we can also define a loop. Uh, so 
with attribute with items, we can imagine uh, the situation that we would like to run some step uh, several times, but with a little bit different configuration. So we can do um, so that we will provide with items argument, we provide the uh, items, uh, and, and we will have uh, 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 an image run several times. Uh, we can also pass uh, some variables from different steps. So in this example, we are passing the uh, Postgres uh, IP address because it, it is dynamic, so we need to somehow uh, pass it explicitly, so, so the other step will know what the current IP address is. Uh, and now let's have a look on a sub-template definition. So we need to define the input parameters. We provide the name of the, the image. We can provide uh, a command line, for example. Uh, and in Git example, uh, we need to mount stuff like uh, private SSH key, known hosts, a script uh, from a configuration map, and the test, uh, and a volume where the test repository will be used. So we need to define this sub templates for all of our uh, steps, and then we can call ourselves uh, YAML developers. <laughs> uh, and also we can submit this. Uh, so using Argo CLI uh, tool, we can just uh, run it, or also we can run uh, a normal uh, cube control uh, tool. But uh, the, advantages, the advantage of Argo uh, CLI tool is that we can pass this uh, workflow parameters. So, for example, I can change the revision uh, of the Git. Uh, okay, and then the graph is built by Argo controller. We can check the graph in Argo UI, and every, when everything is green, uh, right, then everything is green, and we are happy. Uh, so now Argo events. So we saw how to run it manually. So if we would like to run it automatically, then we can use Argo events uh, project. So basically, uh, we can wait for different kind of events uh, entities. So like something something happened on GitHub, something. Uh, we can have a webhook, uh, we can have a look on AWS SNS or GCP PubSub or whatever. Uh, and there are gateways uh, that are waiting for these events. These events are dispatched to, to sensors and sensors uh, can have filters because sometimes we can get events that we are not interested so we can fill them filter them out, and we can provide some uh, Boolean logic. Uh, and when the Boolean logic will be evaluated as true, we can trigger uh, a proper uh, workflow. And at that point will be it. So uh, here are the links to the Argo project documentation. There is a lot of uh, stuff examples uh, on GitHub. So if you are interested, you can check it out. Uh, so thank you, and are there any questions? Thank you. Yep. Thank you. ask more questions during the break uh, from Matthew. Uh, next we'll have a short break. We'll start with the lightning talks at uh, 5.
All right. So last time to get some coffee and tea, and then we'll be back here at five. Thank you. Thank you.